Juicy Bitch Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Leone. I am so excited today to talk to you about everybody's favorite new buzzword, AI or artificial intelligence. I have a wonderful guest here. He's going to teach us all about using AI to save time. So fun. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Beehive. I'm so glad you came. If you're back, I'm so happy that you came back. Thank you so much. I think you're really going to enjoy this episode. Uh, so without further ado, I will introduce he, to you, Jared Goss. Hi, Jared. Welcome to the show. Hello, Melissa. How are you? I'm great. I'm so glad you're here. This is going to be a fun one. So why don't you start with a little about who you are, where you come from, and how you do life? Sure. Um, yeah, my name is Jared. I am a co-owner, co-owner co-founder of our digital marketing company, Kodiak Digital Marketing Experts. I run it with my business partner and friend, Tony. Um, our business started off as a side project where you know, we, we made an app first and then we had to market the app and build websites for it. And all that went really, really well. And we had a bunch of businesses wanting to use us to do those same things for them. And before you knew it, we had a, uh, we had a digital marketing company. And so we've been running that for the last 10 years now, and we have clients around the globe and just keep doing more and more things here in the digital marketing space. So great. I have had a front row seat to, to your progress and it's been amazing to watch you. Jared and I've been friends for a very long time. He's actually the creator of both of my websites, both for efficiency, Bitch and for two cents. And I'm very proud of both of them. So thank you for the work that you did there. And I can't Always. wait to talk about this. So AI artificial <laughs> intelligence is like everybody's talking about right now. I think chat GPT has certainly uh, turned on the general public to something that's like been around for a while. Let's not lie. AI is not brand sure. new. It's just brand new in everybody's in everybody's mind. So why don't we start a little bit with, let's start at the beginning. Let's talk about SEO because I think SEO is one of the things that most people hear when they talk about marketing. And then let's just talk about how AI can help with SEO and why you need all these crazy acronyms in your life. If you're a business owner or, or a content sure. creator, cause it's not just about business, right? It's, um, it's about creating information that other people want to read. Yeah. Um, you know, typically we apply it to, uh, businesses in our agency, but, um, it's, it's all the same. It's, you know, you're writing content that people can be searching for and want to read and, um, there's just no end to the amount of content that is out on the internet and that's going to be produced. Um, so just to back up, you know, SEO stands for search engine optimization for those that aren't familiar. Um, it's how people organically find uh, your website. Um, and typically there's, there's a lot of things that go into SEO, but one of the major things is content marketing and that's creating long form content that uh, lives on your website that explains um, aspects of what you do, uh, the services that you provide. Um, you're trying to target people that might be interested in your services. So questions that they might have around the things that you do um, and all of it is in all of it is in an effort to show Google and the other search engines that you're an authority on what you do, um, that you're an expert and that people um, can trust you as a result of that. Um, so when it's done correctly, it helps your all of your pages and all of your every page on your website rank higher um, for when people are searching for your business. Mm hmm. Um, and SEO is expensive, so, right? I mean, I hear people talk about this all the time. I'm going to spend all this money on SEO. I'm going to do all these things for their, to make their websites show up at the top of a Google search or of a search engine, right? Is that, so I type in um, ice cream shop and things pop up in a certain order and that's search engine optimization. That's what you're talking about. That is correct. And um, as far as the cost of SEO, I mean, technically SEO is free. Um, anybody can do it. Um, there's a lot to do uh, in SEO, but, you know, we write about this stuff in our blog. We talk about it on our YouTube channel. Um, you know, we like to empower business owners to do these things if they can. It all comes down to time. Mm -hmm. um, SEO is an extremely time consuming process. Um, there's a number of things that you need to know, um, as well as keep up on, uh, the algorithm for Google alone changes 500 times a year. Um, and 
every one of those changes can have an effect on how your site ranks and how your content will work and it could change your strategy. So, yeah, um, I feel the, the same way about accounting. It, like, don't do it by yourself. Hire an expert. Yeah. <laughs> you hey, can learn it, but you it's know what? Us. I did you it. By, you know, you know, I did it by myself for a long time. And yeah, I was relieved. And I got I to clean expert. it up, Jared. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you. I'm sure. I thank you for that before. Well, but, but, but here's the point I'm trying to drive <laughs> home is that some people might hear it's expensive and it may be expensive if you don't want to pay for it. But the alternative is spending a lot of time, which is the whole message of this episode on something that is going to continuously change. So it's like trying to wash your car in the middle of a rainstorm. You're never going to be able to keep up sure. with it completely. And it will provide benefit to you to have it done properly. Right. So SEO is something that all small businesses needs to think about whether or not they hire it out. It does need to be something on your mind, right? Absolutely. Um, I mean, anytime you have a website, you should be thinking of how people are going to find it because mm -hmm. why have a website otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if either they search it and find it organically, or you pay to have people go to it and drive traffic that way, um, or you're running a social media campaign. I mean, there's always some reason to get something there, but organic is, is, one of the biggest and the highest converting ways to get um, business from a, from a website. So yeah. yeah, outsourcing it to an agency like us, yes, it can get expensive, but the return on investment is usually far sure. greater if, if the agency is doing it correctly. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So now let's talk about, the, so that's what SEO does. So you can have a website and if you're not driving traffic to it, it's just sitting there doing nothing. So search engine optimization is how someone is going to find your website and actually click on it if they don't already know your business name and be able to connect with you. Now, I am a, I mean, I wrote a whole book about it, but like, I like efficiency and I want to have things done quickly. I like robots. I like automation. I like to be able to delegate when possible. And I like to eliminate. So what are the type, those are my three, like, things about time, automate, eliminate, delegate. Um, I want to get into the automate because that's the AI portion. We talked about delegate, hiring somebody to help you with the SEO. What are some of the things that you can eliminate when it comes to get rid of the noise? You're focusing on X, Y, Z, where really you should just focus on Y and Z. What's the, what's the piece that people spin their wheels on the most in your opinion? Um, trying to do everything, um, as, as when it comes to marketing, I mean, we have, you know, tons of social platforms that you can market on. You have SEO, you have content marketing strategies, you have YouTube, uh, and doing videos, you have paid marketing that can go on all the channels as well. So there's, mm -hmm. there's just so many ways to get your name out there. Um, the biggest thing that we do as an agency and that we recommend to our clients for that matter is finding the things that work and honing in on those. So, you know, a lot of businesses like to, you know, for instance, they want to market on TikTok and TikTok is a fantastic marketing platform, but it's got a really young demo. So maybe your demographic isn't there. Um, maybe it's more on Facebook and not Instagram, you know, it, you know, food stuff does better on Instagram. So it's a matter of knowing where your target audience is and how to reach them best and focusing on those things rather than everything. Yeah. That's so important. Right. I, people ask me all the time if I'm on TikTok and I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm not speaking to an audience that's on TikTok. It's, it's not my age demographic at, at all, either for efficiency bitch or for two cents. Those two piece, those two groups of people are not typically hanging out on, on TikTok. Some of them are, but not most of them. So you're right. It, it is about eliminating the things you don't have to be everywhere. Pick one or two and then yep. drive those home. Right. I love it. Okay. So now let's get into the good stuff. So artificial intelligence has been around for a long time. I think it was first sure. used like in the sixties or seventies, it just wasn't available to all of us. And it's also been a, around for a long time that we're all using. We just didn't know we were using it. Um, but now it's, at our fingertips. And it is all anybody can talk about. I'm hearing about it everywhere. Um, what do you know about artificial intelligence and how are you seeing it make an impact in the marketing space? Uh, whew, that's so that's, that's a really loaded question. Um, you know, AI we've been using in marketing for a long time, as you said, um, 
you know, it runs the algorithms that um, determine where our ads get placed and it runs the machine that runs the bidding process for our ad placements. Um, you know, even targeting is led up to AI um, by figuring out who's most likely to convert on an ad um, and things like that. So again, it's something that we've been using for a long time. Um, you know, as we speak, things are changing super rapidly, um, even with Google or especially with Google, um, you know, they've just switched to a full AI um, piece there. So uh, as they're making this switch, it feels like things are breaking um, and it feels like things are changing really fast. Um, I mean, it, it won't be long before the way people search for things or how things show up on search results are is going to change drastically so uh it's it's a lot of reading and a lot of um you know just keeping up on on the latest articles and seeing where things are going we've always been good about looking around the corner and i feel like it's never been more important than it is now yeah yeah chat gpt has really taken hold of the general i saw a stat the other day that said and don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty close to the accurate numbers here. Um, it took less than two months for the number of users on chat GPT to go from 1 million to 200 million. Mm -hmm. That's an extraordinary rate of people to jump onto something. Uh, and I'm one of those. I mean, the moment it came out, I was like, that sounds cool. Let's go check it out. And I play with it all the time. I'm always showing the kids like, okay, watch this and give me an, ex give me an essay on red trucks and use the word because three times, I mean, you can tell it some incredibly detailed things. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's really amazing, but it's also very canned in many cases. Like I can say the same thing three days in a row and get the exact same answer, which is cool because it is artificial intelligence, but it's supposed to be natural language. That's the whole idea here. And it's not super spot on for natural language. I still like to mess with it and, and add my own flavor to it. How, what do you see in this space? Are people using it just the way it comes out? Or are they adding their own flair? Uh, there are definitely people that are using it as it comes out. And again, you know, these, these AI writing tools have been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've, we've tried them all just because we're curious and we've abandoned them immediately um, because they were just terrible, you know, with between the, uh, Jasper and Jeeves and all the other ones. And they were just really, really bad. Uh, Chat GPT has been the first one that has really impressed me. Um, but still, you cannot just take it and run with what comes out of it. Uh, the more you use it, the more it learns. And you can really like, if you type in the right prompts and really like get into exactly what you want it to say, uh, it, it can produce a pretty good starting point for you to then, you know, put your own spin on it and, mm -hmm. um, you know, be able to post something like that. Uh, I like to work it the other way around. Usually I'll write a rough idea of, of something that I want to write about, and then I'll put it into chat GPT and, you know, say, I want it to be in this tone and, um, I want it to be at this level of reading score. And uh, I wanted to use this keyword so many times within the article. And uh, other than that, just punch it up and make it look better. And I mean, you could talk to it just like you would a person, just like I said right there. And it'll it'll do exactly that. And yeah. usually that comes out pretty good. And then I'll cherry pick what I want to want to pull out of there and, you know, just to punch up the article a little bit. But I think the writing be... score that you just hit said is is so critical. And we should talk about that because sometimes people assume that just what comes out, everybody's going to be able to understand. And mm -hmm. depending upon what you're talking about, if you're talking to an expert, they're going to understand at a much higher fluency of a topic than somebody who's just learning. Like I know nothing about SEO. So if you got on here and started talking to me at an expert level, you'd lose me. Or if you wrote a blog at an expert level, you would lose me almost instantly. Um, so knowing exactly the right score, as you put it to, to talk into that group is, is really important too. And, and I yeah. haven't used that part for, for the AI. So it's able to do that. Now you can say, talk to it at this level. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty handy. Cause I mean, that's actually an SEO ranking factor is how readable is it to the layman? Um, mm -hmm. and you're, you're right. A lot of people that do write for themselves 
will get super technical because it's the things they talk about every single day. But mm -hmm. yeah, you, you can lose a reader really fast. And then yeah. what did your article accomplish? Yeah. And you don't want to sound like a textbook. You can't, no one's going to understand it. You have to mm -hmm. talk in a way that someone can digest it and understand. And I tell people this often too, if you, you read differently than you hear. So if, if you go read a transcript of someone's speech, it may be very confusing, but if you listen to them, it's much easier to comprehend. And so we don't all have a very high reading level. I think the average American has like a fifth grade reading level. It, it really will make you think, wow, there's a lot of really educated people, but they only read it at fifth grade reading level. The comprehension of what you're reading is, is kind of what you're after. So think about sure. that when you're putting things on your website or you're writing blogs or you're putting content out onto social media, uh, those pieces are, are really important. Yeah. As well as attention span, that's just getting smaller <laughs> and smaller with people. So True that. Yeah, you're, if your article's not entertaining or engaging, then they're out of there too. I'll tell you, we used to run hour long podcasts and I'm doing 20 minutes these days because most people won't listen to anything that's more than 30 minutes. And I'm one of them. I mean, I don't, I don't yep. listen to long podcasts either. In fact, audible is one of those places I'll look at an audible and go, that's 17 hours. Nah, <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. listen to it. I'll find one that's four or five hours, you know, and, and shift it over that way. Um, Jared, so tell me more about how to use the right prompts for AI. What is the right way to get those prompts? I mean, we talked a little bit about the different things. Are there certain keywords that you use when you're talking to it? Um, and are you actually using words to tell your artificial intelligence? Are you typing it? What are some of the best tips you have for that? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I do everything on a desktop. Um, I'm just in front of my computer all day long. So it's, it's always being typed. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the prompts, I mean, you could Google pretty much anywhere has lists of, of so many different ways that you can prompt this thing, but you can get used to how you're doing it, the more you use it. So um, you could say like, I want you to act as an SEO editor and copywriter. I need you to proofread and analyze the following text and optimize it for the focus keyword. Mm -hmm. I also need to correct any grammar mistakes and you find in this article um, and, and hit enter and see what it does and, you know, post your thing there. Um, you can use it to build a content calendar, um, which is a really efficient way to run your content marketing or even social media posts and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, give me 30, 30 ideas this month to write about um, based on this topic in particular or this, this service industry. Uh, you could use it to find uh, keywords and keyword volumes. So mm -hmm. I want to write an article about this, find me the best keywords and their volumes. Let me know if it's trending and any time of year has seasonality. Uh, and that'll help you understand if you're actually writing something that people want to read. Um, you know, that search volume determines uh, mm -hmm. how likely it is that somebody wants to read what you're writing about. So it's, it's definitely one of those things that you can you just get used to uh, using more. Um, again, it does learn your tone of voice. Um, you can tell it to pretend to be anything. Um, you can tell it to be a, pretend to be a professional or a customer that's learning about things. It's it's just insane the amount of prompts that you could give this thing and it uh, follows. And are you using chat GPT? Is that the AI of choice for you? Currently, yeah. Um, like I said, all the other ones I've tried have just been pretty terrible. Um, mm -hmm. This one, ironically enough, um, what got me using it the most is we had lost one of our developers and it was right around when ChatGPT came out and I'm the other developer. So in order to save time, I tested out ChatGPT to write um, some scripts for me, some code and things like that. And I mean, it cut hours off of my development time um, cool. so much that I didn't need to fill that spot anymore. So <laughs> that's yeah. one of the things I like using it for. Um, but yeah, we use it to help us write ad copy and uh, meta titles and descriptions for SEO and things like that. So it's just it just helps reduce the amount of time that we're doing the thing and gives us more time to think about the thing, make sure we're doing it right.
Yeah. I mean, well, you just said two things there that are super critical, I think, in using artificial intelligence is it's going to eliminate jobs. It is. There's no, there's no way around totally. that. It is going to be faster and smarter than humans in most cases, but it's not going to replace all human jobs. It's going to give nope. the humans that are still doing the work, the time to analyze it, read it, modify it, make it better when the computer can do the things that we spend so much of our bandwidth trying to get through. So there's definitely pros and totally. cons to it. Um, I, for one, I'm a big fan of these types of things. I've always liked robots. I've always liked automation. I think this is just a new, um, exciting time to see where it may go next. I'm very interested in where it may take schools and education, right? I mean, you and I both have sure. young kids. I anticipate my 10 year old will be asking the AI to write papers for her very soon and do her homework for her. And how are we going to keep up with that as parents and make sure that they're learning the material and not just learning the, how to use the AI, but also what things can we cut out? Because in real life, they don't need to know in the future <laughs> because the computers will all know it for them. So, um, it'll be an interesting decade, I think, as this starts to really unfold. It will. And I'll tell you, as I, it's as a parent, it's, it's hard to, I'm not, I feel like I'm on both sides of the coin at times, yeah. Rick, you know, why do why do we need to learn spelling? We have spell check now, you know, why do we need to write papers anymore? Cause we could have a robot do it for us. But on the other hand, it's like, how dumb are our kids going to grow up being not having these skill sets and things like that. So, I mean, yeah. it's AI, AI came to be because of kids writing papers and knowing how to spell and things like that. So, you know, it, it's, uh, it's definitely a weird, weird and interesting thing to think about. Yeah. I, I always flash back. My first job in life was as a bank teller and there was lines out the door. I mean, hours people would stand in line to cash their paycheck. And I went into a branch a couple of weeks ago for the first time in probably five years. And there was nobody there. And it was a Friday afternoon, which 20 years ago in my world, that was, been, busy, yeah. that was the craziest <laughs> time. So it's funny things change. Right. And, um, Sometimes they happen really quickly and sometimes they happen a little slower. And I think this is one of those things that's going to happen pretty quickly. I heard uh, AI referenced recently as one of the things that is going to make human productivity skyrocket. And the other two examples that they gave were the U.S. highway system in the 1950s allowed humans to be far more productive than they'd ever been before because that was the fastest way to travel. We could get goods and services and people places a lot faster than we ever could. And then in the 1990s, where everyone got personal computers and that made humans far more productive than they ever had before. And that AI is going to be that third piece that just drives productivity absolutely through the roof. So sure, the crystal ball will tell, but um, there's some potential there for sure. It'll be, it'll be really interesting. Okay. I want to ask you one more question. I am a geek about well, a lot of things, let's be honest, but I like to do things very efficiently and I want to get things done as fast as possible. And I'd love your feedback on how to make, do you batch transactions for, do you recommend people batch content? Do you, do you batch create blogs? Do you batch create social media content? What is your best thought around that for people who are trying to do it by themselves and, and try to get through putting out content uh, faster? Yeah, sure. Um... Yes, we do um, batch these things. So anytime we're starting a uh, SEO strategy, for instance, we would do a keyword map first and um, figure out what we want to rank. And then um, we figure out what articles that we'll need to help those things to rank. So what topics we need to cover. And uh, we look at those search volumes and things like that. So we usually come up with a good list of you know 10 or 20 of them. And um, basically make, make, write them all, uh, and then optimize them all and post them all and have them go out on a scheduled timeline. So with the websites, we can put them all in place and then just have them automatically, uh, distribute, uh, when they're going. And that way we can use our time to focus more on the other things of SEOs, so the technical aspects of it, the backlinking and things like that. Cool. Very good. All right. One final question. And then you're off the hook. <laughs> where 
do you think you're the most efficient and where do you need a little help? So that was a really fun conversation I had with my whole team right before this call, because <laughs> I don't feel like I'm very efficient in a lot of things. I do a lot of things. Um, but the one thing that came up in our conversation was that I am efficient in building efficient processes. So I take the time to figure out what works, what doesn't work. And then we write SOPs on how to do it. And then I don't really get to experience the fun of the efficiency a lot of the times, but uh, my employees here do. And it uh, sounds like they appreciate that. So that's, that's, that's awesome. the best I could come up with for you on that one. I love it. I love it because it is about finding the time today to make tomorrow better. And maybe not just your time, but the people who work for you or the, your customers or your family. I mean, that's kind of the whole premise of efficiency, bitch, right? Is make, use a little bit of time today to make tomorrow better. So I think that's perfect. Awesome. Jared, totally. let tell everybody where they can find you. Where do you want to send your, the audience to come hang out with you? Uh, well, you can always find me on our webpage and that's Kodiak.com, K-O-D-E-A-K.com. Uh, and we're, we have a ton of blogs there on how to do everything that we're talking about today. Um, we're expanded our YouTube channel recently since, um, we freed up some good amount of time with AI, uh, gave me some chances to film some videos. We're doing a whole course. So we've got a lot going on there. Um, and you can find us at any of our socials at Kodiak or at Kodiak team. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. And thank you to the listeners for joining us today. If this was your first time, I hope you subscribe and come back for more. Welcome to the Beehive. If you've been around a while, I hope to see you again next week. Until then, I'm your host, Melissa Leung. See ya. Well, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for listening. If you're new around here, please be sure to leave us a review on any podcast platform you're listening to. And you can always reach out to me to let me know what topics you're interested in hearing about or maybe telling me someone you think would be great for the show. Either way, I'd love to hear from you. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at EfficiencyBee. Until next time, see ya.